Welcome to DAPS Academy. And in this lesson, we are going to be taking a basic look at stress and how to determine when an object will break. Imagine you have two strings made of the same material hanging from the ceiling. One string has a diameter of 0.1 inches, and the other one has a diameter of 0.2 inches. You start to tie increasingly heavy weights on the 0.1 inch string, and you find that the string finally breaks once you place 100 pounds on it. Without physically testing the other string, how much weight can you put on it until it breaks? Now, at first, this may seem like a riddle with a trick answer or something, but I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. So, firstly, before we solve this, we need to learn two vocab words. The first one is stress. Stress. No, it's not the feeling you get before a big test or when you realize your dad is never coming home. By the way, I have a video for that. Stress is a term used to describe force per unit area. Now, I know that might sound confusing at first, but believe it or not, you should already have an intuitive sense of what stress is. Let me show you in another example. Imagine you are stuck in a very high tree and you want to get down. To your right, there is a branch with a thick, meaty rope securely tied to it, and to your left, a branch with a very thin rope. Which rope would you trust more to climb down? The majority of those among us would choose the thick rope, but why is that? I mean, your weight doesn't change depending on your choice. If you weigh 150 pounds and go down the thick rope, the thick rope would have 150 pounds of force acting upon it. If you also went down the thin rope, the thin rope would have 150 pounds of force acting upon it also. 150 pounds is 150 pounds, right? So, wouldn't it not matter which rope you choose? Well, let's go back to our definition of stress. Force divided by unit area. The unit area is the important part. If we took each of our ropes and cut out a tiny slice from it, called a cross-section, you can see that the area of the cross-section of the thick rope is a lot larger than the area of the cross-section of the thin rope. If stress is the value of this fraction, force divided by area, the force is your body weight, which goes in the numerator, and the cross-sectional area goes in the denominator. When the cross-sectional area is smaller, like with the thin rope, the value of this stress fraction increases. Basically, the thin rope would have more stress than the thick rope. If you chose to trust the thick rope more, your brain likely recognized it would have less stress, even if you weren't aware of what stress was exactly. Anyways, there are a lot of units for stress, most common ones you might see is PSI, pounds per square inch, or newtons over squared meters, also known as a pascal. You might notice that pounds and newtons are units of force, and square inches or square meters are units of area. Force divided by unit area, stress. Now the second term we need to learn is called ultimate strength. Yes, I know this sounds like something that an anime character would say in a fight, but in this case, ultimate strength describes the maximum amount of stress a material can take before it breaks. Here is a chart of some common materials along with their ultimate strengths. So now that we have learned the vocabulary, we can go and solve the original question I asked in the beginning of the video. I encourage you to pause the video to try to solve it yourself. Okay, so let's start solving. We know that the 0.1 inch diameter string broke when a maximum force of 100 pounds was applied to it. If you recall from before, the maximum amount of stress a material can take before it breaks is called the ultimate strength. So using these two values, we will have to find the ultimate strength. If the string is 0.1 inch diameter, the radius of the string is 0.05 inches. Using the area of the circle formula pi times radius squared, we get a cross-sectional area of 0 0.0025 pi square inches. I kept the pi as pi because it would make it easier to solve this problem, and I also don't have a calculator with me. So solving for the ultimate strength, we get a value of 40,000 divided by pi pounds per square inch. The problem says that the strings are both made of the same material, and ultimate strength is a material property, so two objects of the same material will have the same ultimate strength. We know the second string has a diameter of 0.2 inches. 
which solving for the cross section, we get 0.01 pi inches squared. So what we need to do is to equate these two equations, and then we're going to find the force that it takes to break the 0.2 inch diameter string. We find the answer to be 400 pounds, four times more than the force required to break the 0.1 inch string since the cross-sectional area is four times greater. Now this video is a pretty simplified look into stress that only covers the very basics, but if you got this far, I hope you enjoyed waiting six minutes for a punchline to come and instead getting a physics lesson. Happy April Fools!